everyone, I'm Nick Johnson, the host of Classical Pairings, and welcome to the Classical Music Hosts Challenge, sponsored by the National Bank of Indianapolis. And so here we are again. I did a series of these in the spring when the pandemic started and we had to kind of shift our plans. Seven months have passed. I've had a lot of time to listen to a lot of music and drink a lot of cocktails and we're back, but with a little bit of a twist this time. So what we're going to do this uh, season is we're going to talk to several local arts leaders in the Indianapolis area, and they're going to send challenge ideas to me. They're going to send me a piece of music and I've got to come up with a cocktail using a local spirit that you can make at home to match it. So let's just go ahead and get started. Today we're going to be talking to Jana Himes from the Carmel Symphony. So take it away, Jana. Hi everybody, I'm Jana Himes. I'm the artistic director of the Carmel Symphony in Indiana. And I have the great pleasure of being on Classical Pairings a couple of months ago with Nick, and we really had such a great time. And I've been asked to um, give a piece that would stump him as far as making a drink and putting music and mixology together. And th this is really a new concept for me. And I, I had so much fun on the show um, that I've been thinking a lot about music and drinking. And um, a lot of us do that at home. And there's some great music that pairs really well. And then there's some music that you think what, what would really work. So uh, I have two pieces that I think would be great. The first piece is by John Cage and it's called Four Minutes and 33 Seconds. And it's a piece where any musician can play this piece. Basically, they sit at their instrument for four minutes and 33 seconds and they do nothing and then they leave. That is the piece. And it's, of course, it's experimental. It was written in the 50s, but I find it so intriguing and I've never performed it. I think I probably could. But, you know, if you do it in a real setting and you actually perform it, it's quite amazing. Some people do it as a joke and they, you know, they sort of sit there and look at their watch. Other people take it very seriously. And that's what I like. So I'd like him to try to find a piece of music, a, a drink that could go with that. Not sure what it could be. Um, but the other piece um, that was really my number one choice is John Adams' Short Ride in a Fast Machine. It's, a, it's around four minutes as well. It's very fast. It's very exciting. It's it's like a, a fast moving car. And I would love to, to, to see what kind of drink he comes up with that. It's probably gonna be something spicy and hot. So thanks for having me again. Really enjoy being on the show. All right, so for my first challenge, uh, we have 433, which is, um, thanks, Jana. Uh, so it's, it's, uh, it really is actually a fascinating piece, piece of art and, and a piece of music, you could say. I mean, John Cage is very interested in you sort of experiencing the room and, and like experiencing what all was happening around you and making it all into music. But it's also silence, so uh, I couldn't come up with much. How about we do like two shots of pandemic crisis. Uh, let's do a dash of, uh, well, we're in fall, so some seasonal depression. We'll do like an ounce of uh, economic, economic stress and, and drink that and it'll feel like every morning. So there we go, Jan, I hope that worked. But for, um, for John Adams, for the piece that's a little easier for me to do, for the short ride in a fast machine. Um, it's a really interesting piece, another 20th century composer, um, another American actually. Uh, John Adams um, is sometimes called a minimalist or he's got minimalist tendencies in his music. Um, this piece, really the title says it all, Short Ride in a Fast Machine. It, it's very driving. It is about four minutes long. There's a wood block that cuts through the whole thing and it feels like you're in a very fast car flying through the desert or something. Um, so it is kind of a fun and exciting piece. What I actually wanted to do with this was a jalapeno margarita, but uh, there's no local uh, tequila because tequila has to be made in Mexico. And there are some distillers who occasionally make a local agave spirit, but I wasn't able to get one. But I came up with another idea that I think maybe seasonally works a little bit better uh, with going into fall. And so what we're going to do is a cinnamon and clove old fashioned. So we're going spicy in a kind of a different way, maybe a more Midwestern way, if you will. Um, and I've been experimenting a little bit with just playing around with different ways to rim a glass. And so we're gonna actually start with that for this cinnamon and clove um, old fashioned. What you need to start with is just an orange peel. So in this drink, we're gonna be using cinnamon, clove. We're, uh, cinnamon and clove. We're gonna use Hotel Tango's bourbon for this one. Uh, we chose this because it's a pretty high proof and it's gonna cut through the spices that we're doing. And then we're gonna use some Angostura bitters. It's actually a really simple drink all that's gonna be a little unusual about it is the rim that we put on it. So normally I would not say to rub an or like a fruit slice all over a glass, but it actually works really well 
um, when you're doing a rimming because it's going to give you that little bit of moisture that you need. So I have a fresh little orange peel and I'm just going to rub this along the glass to just kind of get a little bit of moisture and stickiness on it. And then once I've made it all the way around, probably gone a couple times here, I have a plate of just um, cinnamon and cloves. I just kind of mix cinnamon and cloves, uh, ground cloves. Um, because the, the big ones wouldn't really stick to a glass. And all I'm going to do here is just take the glass and that part that is sticky from the little bit of orange should grab just a tiny little bit of cinnamon. Um, it's not going to be a lot, but you, you also don't really need a lot while you're doing this. And you can tell that I didn't, it's not super pretty, but it's also kind of cool. Um, so I'm going to get all the way around the glass here. It already smells pretty amazing. Just with, I mean, it's just an empty glass with a little bit of cinnamon and clove around the outside. By the way, the reason you do it like this, rather than like a cookie cutter, is you don't want it inside the glass. You want it around the glass so that when you're drinking it, you get to choose how much of the spice do you want. It's the same way when you salt a margarita. You don't want the salt to fall into the glass, you want it on the outside of the glass. So you lay it down and go around like that. So we'll drop the orange peel in. We'll come back to that glass in just a minute. We're gonna go ahead and make the drink in another glass. And we're going to do, um, I'll go ahead and put a couple of these ice cubes in there though. We'll need that in a minute. So this drink, as I said, is very simple. We're just gonna start with two ounces or two shots of Hotel Tango's bourbon made here in Indianapolis. They make all sorts of spirits. And this one works really well with whiskey cocktails just because it is, as I said, kind of a high proof and it stands up to a lot that you throw at it. Uh, next, we're gonna use some Angostura bitters. I maybe should have put these in first, but it doesn't really matter, but it's all kind of a ritual, isn't it? So a little bit of bitters and then just a little bit of simple syrup. Uh, we make our own simple syrup. This one we actually made and we, we thought about making a new one, but uh, this we just made out of water and Splenda, actually, because we're trying to just have a little bit less sugar in our diet. So when we make simple, we're not even using real sugar, we're just using Splenda. The, the one drawback, as you'll see, is it's going to cloud the drink just a little bit when it gets cold. But it's a small price to pay to maybe cut out a few, you know, kind of empty sugar calories. I'm only going to do about half an ounce of simple in this because I don't like drinks very sweet. Um, if you have a sweet tooth, go ahead and do a full ounce on that. And now we're going to stir this up. And the reason I'm doing these in separate glasses is because I didn't want this stirring process to mess up the rim that we have there. You can see that the, <laughs> you can see that it's getting a little bit foggy so much so that it's making me drop my stirring spoon, but oh well. Um, I might just add, I, I wanted, I experimented with just a tiny bit of this adding just a little bit of the spice. I'm going to add just a little bit of cinnamon to it. Again, if we're going for kind of a, like a hot tamale sort of spiciness. And then we're going to go ahead and just pour this in. Not my best pour ever, but it's not like we're having company over right now, so it works just fine. So there we have it. This is a cinnamon and clove old fashioned. And what you'll notice, it's really the perfect drink for fall. Uh, the cinnamon and the cloves just, it, it sort of tastes almost a little apple pie. You could maybe even do just a tiny bit of nutmeg on it. And I think it matches this, this piece of music because the bourbon is sharp. The bourbon's gonna cut through and it's gonna feel like you're kind of holding on uh, for dear life to get through and like hold on for this drink. But then the cinnamon and clove, um, it's, it's this very sort of present uh, feeling. It's sort of like the, the minimalism thing almost. It's a very simple sort of smell, but it just kind of overpowers, or not overpowers, I'm sorry. It sort of is always present within the drink. All right, so thank you so much, everybody. Classical Pairings is a listener-supported podcast, video series, and blog. If you like what you hear, you can text PAIR, P-A-I-R, to 202-858-1233 to help us keep bringing you the best in classical music paired with great craft food and beverage makers. Thank you so much, everybody. I'll see you next week.